Welcome to Electron Line, and now that we have found the general equation for an oscillatory system with damping, let's find the general solution to that equation. And so here, notice that uh, x double dot represents acceleration, x dot represents velocity. Remember, x double dot is the second derivative of position with respect to time, and x dot is the first derivative of position with respect to time. So when you look at that, it should look a lot like a quadratic equation. So what we do is we create what we call a characteristic equation that makes that one look like a quadratic equation. And in order to do that, it would look like this. We can say that 0 is equal to, and we can use any variable. We use the variable lambda, lambda squared, plus b over m, lambda plus k over m. So what we've done is we've turned the differential equation into a quadratic, a characteristic quadratic equation. So this is called the characteristic equation. And it's one of the methods in which we can solve differential equations. And that's how we do that. So we call that a characteristic equation. And so whatever lambda becomes in this equation, that will be the value for x, and that will then become the solution of the differential equation. So this is simply a quadratic equation. We use that using the quadratic formula. We solve that, so we have lambda is equal to minus b, which will be minus b over m, plus or minus the square root of b over m squared, so be b squared divided by m squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is k over m, like that, all divided by 2 times a, which is simply 2. All right, that would be the solution, but let's try to simplify that one a little bit. First of all, it looks like we could factor out an m squared in the denominator here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom of the second term by m. So times m divided by m like that. All right. So when we do that, notice that we have an m squared in the denominator, an m squared in the denominator, which can be factored out. So this can now be written as lambda is equal to minus b over m plus or minus 1 over m, because if we factor out an m squared out of the radical, that of course becomes simply m times the square root of b squared minus 4km, and the whole thing divided by 2. And now we can move the m to the denominator. So now we have lambda is equal to minus b uh, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4km, all divided by 2m. And then in order to maybe write it in a slightly better format, what we can then do is we can then say that lambda is equal to minus b over 2m plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4km all divided by 2m. And then if we replace, just for simplicity, if then we replace this quantity here by some character and this quantity here by some character, we could then say that lambda is equal to minus, let's call it alpha, plus or minus beta. So that would then be the solution. And so what we can then say is, if we then move over here, that lambda is equal to uh, minus alpha plus beta. Whoop, and that's a terrible looking beta. Let me try that again. There we go. And lambda is equal to or, because it's a dual solution, or minus lambda minus beta. All right. So now, that it, those are the roots of my characteristic equation. Not to find the solution of that, we can now say, and if you call, that, if you call those roots lambda 1 and lambda 2, so now that we have the roots, now the general equation will be written as so x as a function of time is equal to some constant times e to the root times t plus c sub 2 e to the second root times t. Now, we'd like to write this slightly differently, like this. We would like to write it as a negative exponent because we think of the damping effect causing a decay of the oscillation. So then we're going to write this equation as x as a function of time is equal to c sub 1 times e to the minus, minus lambda sub 1 times t, plus c sub 2, 
e to the minus minus lambda sub 2 times t. And now remember that we have lambda 1 and lambda 2, which are the characteristic roots of our equation, are written as minus alpha plus beta. So this becomes x as a function of time is equal to c sub 1 e to the minus. And minus lambda sub 1 would be alpha minus beta. Well, that's not a very good looking beta. Let me try that again. There we go, much better, times t. And that would be then uh, plus c sub, t, c sub 2 e to the minus. And that would be the negative of this. That would be alpha plus beta, like so, times t in the exponent. And so that now becomes the final solution, or the general solution, to my differential equation right here. So we started with this general differential equation representing oscillatory motion with the damping factor and then the general solution to that would be equal to this. Now, don't forget that alpha and beta are represented by these quantities right here. So we have alpha is equal to b divided by 2m, beta is equal to this quantity right here with the radical. Now since we have a radical here and depending upon the value for b, the contents of the radical could be greater than zero equal to zero or less than zero. For example, if b squared is less than minus 4km, then this will become an imaginary number. We have an imaginary solution. So what happens is, depending upon what the value of b is, so that what's underneath the radical is either positive, equal to zero, or negative, we'll have three different kinds of solutions representing simple harmonic motion with a damping factor. One is the case where we have over damping, the other one is where we have critical damping, and the last one is where we have under damping. So in the next video, I will show you the example of all three cases, and then we'll look at each case separately and how we interpret the results so we can then interpret the actual oscillatory motion caused by simple motion with damping.